I'm Karen. And I'm Alyssa. And we're from the BB Library, and this is DIY Poetry. This program was something that we were going to run in the building before we had to shut down, and we decided to bring it to you in this format instead. Um, it's part of our Just for the Fun of It series, which brought you some great programs, for instance, our Bad Art Sessions, which um, where we invited adults to come in and just play with art materials, um, kind of like you were a kid again, um, with no other goal than to just have a good time, um, no result, no worries about results, no uh, judgment, no criticism. And so you were just allowed to make bad art. Now this is what we want to do here with, with words. We don't want to try to rival Shakespeare or Emily Dickinson. We're just here to have fun with words and help you find some ways to do that. Um, we want to make sure that everything you we give you here is something that you can do from home given the circumstances so we're going to start with something called book spine poetry which uh, Alyssa is going to talk to you about yes and i'll just share the screen with you all all right everybody so book spine poetry you are as library lovers you're probably all familiar with it um, a lot of libraries have examples on social media or bookstores or just people at home. Um, but for anyone not familiar, um, this is a kind of poetry that unlike some other forms, you do not have to start from scratch. So it's a really good first foray into this DIY poetry program. Um, so instead of creating poetry by scratch, you instead find it in your own house. So you find it on your bookshelves, um, and you take a look at the spines or the titles of these books that you have right at home. And what you want to do is you can rearrange them on top of one another until the spines read as a poem. So these can be funny, they can be serious, they can be emotional, um, they can be kind of nonsensical. It's a really fun, low pressure way to create a poem. And you can um, use other things besides, um, you could say if you have a bunch of DVDs at home, you might be able to use those. You could use maybe games, um, anything that has a spine that you can kind of sit on top of each other. This is, this is a great possibility. Completely. Definitely feel free to mix and match. I know that after the whole Marie Kondo phenomenon of the last couple of years, maybe you got rid of some of your books. So use what you have. Anything with a title will really do. Um, so we're going to show you some examples for you to be inspired. So here's one that Karen made. Um, so this one is inspired by her husband. And it reads, my brilliant friend, my absolute darling, the man who climbs trees, eats, shoots, and leaves, astonish me. So you can see here that Karen used a theme, um, and it really does read like a poem. So we have a couple more to show you as well. We have lots. We do, yeah. We actually um, put the call out to all of our librarians at BB Library, and everyone had a blast with this. Oh, so we had so much fun with these. And this yeah. Is another, yeah, this is another subject-related one, so. Yes. So this one is um, based on Julia Child. So it reads, La Vie en Rose, Sweet Frances, My Life in France, Paris to the Moon, Appetite for Life. So you can clearly see Jackie's inspiration there. <laughs> and next we have Catherine, which has definitely got a theme of social distancing. Yes, so Catherine is inspired by our current situation and hers reads, a confederacy of fences close to home, the art of eating, tiger. Um, so I think many of you get those references. We like that one. This is from my friend Dave in Connecticut, and it was oh, also a, a social distancing one, which I thought was pretty good. Oh, okay, great. So this is Dave's, and it reads, Dear life, let the great world spin. Daily rituals, the life-changing magic of tidying up, spotting improbable moments of grace, small victories. <laughs> I think that's definitely one that I can relate to. We do. My house All is of the above. cleaner. <laughs> uh, and this is Annie, right? 
Yes, this is Annie's example. This is um, Annie from our youth room. Um, how to build a girl, brave enough, inside out and back again. Am I normal yet? <laughs> That's a very adolescence inspired yeah. poem and I relate very much to that. Totally. Even though I'm not an adolescent. And this one's one of the falls in the slightly nonsense. I don't remember category. what it was like though. <laughs> Definitely you can think back to your childhood when oh, you create these. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so here's Jeff's example. Blindness, invisibility, slash and burn. Cats prefer it this way. <laughs> I said, Jeff, this, this one's definitely catist. You can't, this is, this is not <laughs> yeah. right. he's, he's a dog person. You can tell. <laughs> so yeah. speaking of children in hearkening back to your childhood, Jackie did an example with some of the kids books she has at home, which are excellent, excellent ways. Yeah. To they have these great pop. titles. Oh yeah. You can have so much fun with these. So one of her examples reads, we're going on a bear hunt up in the air not the armadillo. <laughs> Poor armadillo. <laughs> Armadillo's not invited today. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to move on to um, something else which is a little more um, involved, I guess. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are kind of arts and craftsy, this one will appeal to you because the coll collage poetry is pretty much what it sounds like. It's kind of one part art project and one part um, word fun. And all you need for this is some old magazines, maybe old books, but you know, be really sure you want to get rid of a book before you, um, cause you're going to need to cut it up. Um, you could even use stuff like junk mail. Um, one of the things I found in this is, so essentially you're cutting out words from a page. You're first, you're, you go through and carefully pick your words. You want to find really nice juicy ones, um, words that have power, um, because that's what poetry does, right? It 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 distills feeling in in um, in a in a few in in a few words. So you're looking for those words. You're also going to be looking for a few of the small words like and the and to and um, and and but th those kinds of things because you want to join them. You might want to um, find like and as um, as this this happens in a lot of this kind of poetry. Um, because they make good similes and metaphors. Um, uh, you then cut them all out. And what I was gonna say is, it, uh, when I was mentioning the junk mail is, you know, typeface can be a fun thing to play with. So if you've got a bunch of different typefaces, the whole thing might end up looking like a ransom note or something, um, which can be kind of fun, especially if the subject matter lends itself to it. Um, uh, but don't, one, one caveat is that I ran into is that magazines a lot of magazines have really small type and <laughs> by the time you end up cutting them out they're actually too small to work with so be aware of that when you start um so you can then make all you, you've cut it you've found your words by circling them or whatever and then you cut them out and you can sort of make piles either maybe according to subject matter so if you're writing a poem about the weather and you're I, you know, you might, you can, you can put different, different subjects in different piles, or you could think about it in terms of parts of speech. If, if you're more grammatically minded, you could put all the nouns in one pile and the verbs and the adjectives and that kind of stuff. So either way, any way you want to do it. Um, you can also think about the fact that poems make shapes. A lot of times, if you remember E.E. E. Cummings and the way he used to, he wrote poems, um, they, they formed shapes on the page and that had a lot to do with how you read the poem out loud. Um, and remember that line breaks are important in poetry. So when you're gluing the things onto the page, um, you think about where you end one line and begin the other, because when you're speaking it, which is the way that poetry is really supposed to be done, you um, wanna pause in, in, in appropriate places that help you make your point. So we're gonna show you a couple that uh, our friend Megan did, who is very crafty and she made them very pretty as well. The first one says, only in isolation am I devoted to neglected domestic chores. Waiting for me, I will finish. And I like- I love this one. It's so perfect for Megan. Megan's a, an amazing DIYer, um, not just of poetry, but of all things and a crafter. And she, um, you know, has, she's getting a lot done while she's home alone and this tells you that. Yeah. And I like the way that she used the, um, 
the line breaks and the shape of the poem and the I yeah. will finish because you feel really much you feel that resolution in the way she put those last words yeah it's a really good example of how um you're not limited in the same way as when you're writing on a piece of paper this is like you said you can do a lot of shapes you can play with the background um the, the separation between words you can really it really is a visual art in, as well yeah as a Just, as a textual yeah Creation. Obviously, you can make your your background pertain to the poem as well if you wanted to. And she did another one, which was a little spooky, actually. The sameness frightened him, something familiar yet so outrageous. The door beckoned him outside, but the walls closed around him. Is this a vacation or an exercise in patience? Oh, I feel seen. <laughs> 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 yeah or it kind of reminds me of some scene from a horror movie though you know it's like yeah you're you're in a house alone waiting for whatever is about to happen and yeah and and you don't know next so um those are our examples of collage poetry and i and then we're gonna move on to a similar but not quite the same yeah, so so we're going to talk about blackout poetry. And yeah, there are a lot of, you want to keep a lot of the same concepts in mind. Um, you want to keep the concept of juicy words in mind, a, an, and the, using small words. Um, so a lot of the things Karen explained about the collage poetry, we're going to be keeping those in mind here with blackout poetry. So just like with collage poetry, you are working with an existing text, like a magazine or junk mail or something. But for blackout poetry, it really works best with a, a whole page of text. You really want um, a page all together because, well, you'll see, but there is a, a visual component here that, that only works if you have a solid page of text to begin with. Should we show you the good examples? Yeah, I'll explain this and you can take a look at it as I do. It may make it a little easier to understand. So you take an already established text, like in this example, it's the page in a book. Um, and what you want to do is you want to redact words with a black marker until a poem is formed with the remaining um, existing words. So you can see here that there, there's a, a, a very stark visual aspect to this that makes it really interesting to look at. Um, depending Alyssa, on can you move a little are. closer to the screen? Yeah. Thanks. So you can see in this example that there is a striking visual aspect to the, the blacked out words versus the remaining words. Um, you want to focus on finding those juicy words here. Think about capturing a mood or a feeling sometimes helps with this exercise in specifically. Um, so what you want to do is take a pencil at first. Don't just start blacking out words because you may change your mind or get inspired in a different way through the process. So take a pencil and start circling words that stand out to you. Don't forget those little words that help us create um, sentences. Um, don't feel pressured to use too many, but circle what feels right for you. Um, again, you can create a metaphor, you can create a simile. Those are um, poetic techniques that um, really uh, make a poem stand out, make it juicier, really popular in poetry. So feel free to utilize those. And once you've got the word circled that you're happy with, read through them, see if it makes sense to you. And when you're satisfied with what you have, take that marker and black out all the words surrounding the circled words. So let's read um, a few examples to get inspired. So here's one. It reads, afternoon appeared covertly. Something watched, stood outdoors. Can you scroll down a little bit? She looked Alyssa, we've lost your sound. One, I don't know what's going happening. Oh. Try, try again. Okay. Well, you okay. Know, I actually, do you mind reading this example? I actually can only see partial. Okay. Um, on it's my it's screen, too so long for the screen. All right. Afternoon appeared covertly. Something watched, hid outdoors. He looks to the mountains, ready, waiting in place. So again, another kind of spooky one from Megan. That must be it reminds scary. me a little she bit really of that last one, the, the collage poem. <laughs> yeah, she's good at evoking a 
her poetry. That's you can tell kind of her way in poetry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll do this one. Sleeping poorly, on and off, rather uncomfortable. Sit, lay, escape, never over. <laughs> You know, it's been a hard day. It's been a hard, <laughs> been a hard day. <laughs> and this one, um, I, lo I love because it's from, you can see it's from Winnie the Pooh up at the top. So it, it's yeah. got um, lots of Winnie the Pooh words like muddled. I love that. Um, I, I'll read this one too. It seemed muddled, but brought comfort. I remembered. I forgot yesterday, tomorrow, <laughs> this afternoon, the morning between the sun and the sky. That's really Oh, lovely. I love that. You can feel the inspiration from the original text, which if that works for you, definitely go with that. Run with yeah. That. Yeah, that's sweet. And, and not, so, not, not quite so spooky as the others. Um, <laughs> I think that was all we had of those. So the next one we're going to talk about um, is zip code poetry. Um, this is something we heard about online and it was, we thought it was really cool. Um, and we found some great examples. A couple of the examples we're going to show are from the folks at WLRN and the O Miami um, Poetry Festival. And they had actually run a contest to do these, what they call zip odes. Um, but whatever you call them, they're basically five line poems inspired by your zip code um, and structured by them too. So each digit in your code decides how many words goes into each line of the poem. So for instance, if your zip code is 92546, the first line would have nine words, the second line would have two words, the third five and so on, okay? So um, the idea is really that a the poem is about the place that you live. That's what you, that's what they chose for their subjects. It doesn't have to be, it can just be a fun exercise in, in, in expressing any feeling about anything. But um, that, that was the original idea. Um, the one trick, um, oh, I was gonna say, if you are doing the place theme, you don't have to necessarily do it about your zip code. If, especially if you're feeling a little stuck in your zip code at the moment, you might want to think about your dream zip code or the place that you like to go on vacation most and, and write something about that instead. Or um, maybe a hometown that you think fondly of or have memories in. Right, yeah, it would be a great way to do a poem about your childhood, so. Yeah. Um, the one trick in um, zip code poetry is zeros, as you can imagine, because what do you do when there's no words in a line? Um, you can do a couple of things. You can use no words in a line, and we're gonna show you some examples of, of things where that's worked really, really well. Um, or you could choose a number for any zeros in your, um, in your zip code. So all of us in Massachusetts have to deal with this because we all start with zero at least, and some of us have another one somewhere else. Um, uh, you could use it possibly for a punctuation mark. I don't know, there's all kinds of things you could think about for the zeros, but it is, it is a, something to decide before you start. So we'll show you what we mean. The first two are from the WLRN examples um, uh, that we got online. And this first one is from Karen from Clarkdale, Arizona, who is, which is 86324. And she writes about the view from her backyard. The gorgeous multicolored red rock mountain views shimmer in the ever-changing sunset, sunset colors, soon to be spoiled by a future cell tower. And she says, I'm in the middle of a fight, wish me well imagine. Um, this one is one from New York, which where the, the person writing, Patty, uses zeros really effectively as pauses to slow the poem down. Um, meanwhile, uh, so this is, this is 10024, and she's talking about the rental market, and all it says is waiting for the rent to go up. So this one is so great because you see a zip code like one zero zero two four, and you're like, that is seven words. How am I going to create a poem in seven words? And look at this, like with creativity and a way of thinking outside the box, you get a funny, effective, powerful poem. Yeah, and so she creates the sense of waiting with those two zeros, which is perfect. So 
and you'll see some other people now this the next lot we have is these are this is our social distancing edition from a lot of these are from our staff mostly from our staff um so jeff's example from right here in wakefield and he uses that zero and the one to to create the atmosphere of that slowing down that we've all had to do and the waiting as well so sigh every day feels quiet just like a sunday the square is replete with spaces for parking so there's 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 the the space on either side to just slow you right down and is what wakefield looks like right now <laughs> Beth, who lives in 02144, also uses the zero just as a space. To be inside with only my worries, outside birds and flowers. I really like the contrast there. The mm. quiet inside, but the bursting outside. Yeah. And then two from Jackie, who is a mom of two little ones, 02129, silence. I lounge, appreciating nap time. I should not waste it scanning my Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> and then, eek, the snacks depleted the children whining for goldfish when only underripe pears wait. <laughs> These are super relatable. I love this. Yeah, they're so relatable. And she, so, so Jackie, too, because she manages to keep a sense of humor, although <laughs> at times. <laughs> it's like it's very hard I know for all the parents out there I I salute you and this is Jake actually my son a high, who's a high school student in 02148 school not happening sad but not for some do I really th want things back to normal <laughs> I think we can all relate to that too <laughs> yes so and do we have any more can't remember no we were gonna go on and Alyssa's gonna do one last little game thing those zippos are so great because and we were talking about this a little bit before Karen everyone has a unique perspective that they're working from so even if you have three people with the same zip code all creating poems with the same parameters they can be vastly different. Yeah. Um, so don't be afraid to try this with a with a family um, and all of you can find where you overlap or contrast in your perspectives and your and the way that your mind works. It's just very cool. And we are going to tell you in a little bit how you can share some of these with us if you would like to try some. So definitely. But first, um, the, yes, the last thing, uh, the last prompt we'll explain is something that I play with my friends. I played it for years, and I never really even thought about it as a poetry exercise. It's more just been this kind of like goofy, fun social way to be with my friends who love words. Um, so the reason why we don't have any very virtual examples for you is because you can't play this one virtually. So this one, it has to be reserved for um, if, you're, if you're social distancing with a household of three or more people, or you can just kind of keep it in your back pocket for those glorious days when we will all be together again. Um, this one is a super easy, fun thing to do. So the concept is you sit with a group of people. Again, it has to be three or more because a haiku has three lines. Um, I should probably briefly explain a haiku. So a haiku is a poem with three lines that has, the first line has five syllables, the second line has seven syllables, and the third line has five syllables. So, so it's super compact. And different, not, we're not talking words here, we're talking syllables. So you really have to think about these. Exactly, that is a really good point. Um, these, are, these are very tiny. So that makes it go really, really, really fast and, and fun because of that. Um, so the first person takes a blank piece of paper and they write line one. So they write five syllables. And then what you want to do is fold it over so that the next person in line cannot see what you wrote. The next person takes it, they write seven syllables, they fold over the paper, pass it on to person number three, who writes their five syllables, and then either the fourth person or the third person can read out your completed haiku. Um, it, this is just, you can work with the theme if you want to, but you, there's something about how short and sweet a haiku is that you really, 
no matter what you all write, it somehow always magically works together. It is just this incredible thing that, I mean, I've done hundreds of these and only a handful haven't really made any sense. Um, there, there's usually- they Haven't so really made any sense, to, right? So you, you said only a handful haven't made sense. I just yeah, want to make exactly. that clear, yeah. Yeah, because haikus have to be so vague just by the nature of their um, structure. So you can almost always find a way to, to have it make sense. Yeah. Good drinking game. It's, it's a pretty good drinking game, yeah. <laughs> but available to all people and yeah, all lifestyles. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so we just wanna make sure we share with you um, how you can share your poems with us. And these are several ways. Um, you can obviously mention DIY poetry if you'd like to, but um, these are all in Facebook at wakefield.library, Instagram at BB library, um, Twitter at BB underscore library, and hashtag Wakefield connects on any of those. Yes, the point of this program is to really get us talking to one another. I'm telling you when we put these examples to our fellow colleagues, we got so many yeah. responses we couldn't fit them all in this presentation yeah we, we we were surprised and the people who responded were not necessarily people we expected to respond either so people people go for it totally. it's, it's it's a great way to get people connecting yeah you can spend an afternoon with these um depending on how in depth you want to go and how artistic you want to get with your collages and it is it's really an awesome way to spend some time appreciate words um maybe rekindle a, a love or interest in poetry it's but yeah i keep to... running I, I keep running back to my bookshelves and thinking mm, maybe i could put those two together you know it's I know, it, I know. It, it, you know you're like walking around the house and you're like oh wait a minute <laughs> yeah yeah so these are things that you can just do anywhere anytime take a break think of a zip code poetry poem and have some fun all right, so I think that's pretty much all we have for you today. Um, we hope you'll have lots of fun with words and we will see you uh, in one of our future programs. Yes, and hopefully on our social media with your yeah. poems. Show us your DIY poetry. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye.